Hello, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello, Internet. It's Big Dave here, and welcome back. Actually, Big Dave, I should say, it's Executive Big Dave, the High Overlord of the Frugal Mandate here with more Stellaris. So uh, when we last left, we had just encountered our first alien race, the Alpha Aliens, the so-called Alpha Aliens. And uh, Rix was all abuzz with news of the Alpha Aliens. And uh, we are now in the process of trying to figure out exactly what they are. Do they mean us harm? Are they friend? Are they foe? What are they? We can actually kind of get a little bit of a look at them here if we come in tight. Sort of a... I've lost them. There they are. Uh, sort of like an organic spaceship. Look like a Tin Man from uh, Next Generation, yeah. All right, so something going on here. Something uh, something a little different about this particular space-born organism. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's try and uh, figure out who they are. Let's uh, re-engage time. And we are going to see them uh, hopefully leaving our system. Yep, they are getting ready to warp out. You can see the countdown here. And now they are warping out. Well, they didn't actually uh, do anything hostile, so, you know, what I'm hoping is that uh, they are uh, not foe, but friend, or at least uh, just docile, passive uh, space cows that we can ignore. So, uh, last time we also engaged in an anomaly, and that anomaly is now resolved in the form of this event. So we recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on uh, Vorsham 6, I think I said 4 in the last episode, Vorsham 6. Uh, you know, from what we've translated so far, their language, I've uh, learned these aliens call themselves the uh, Eresian Con, uh, uh, Concordat? Concordat. Yeah, that's the word. Uh, yeah, they were inter interstellar power. They sway over religion in the region of the galaxy. Uh, yeah, appear to have uh, been six-limbed mammalians. Okay. Uh, plague. They were uh, apparently wiped out of uh, some sort of plague called the Javorxian Pox. Hmm. Well, we have a sort of a forerunner society here that uh, existed and, and was spacefaring long before uh, the Fruger Frugalians. And now we have an update to our situation log uh, because that'd be too interesting to pass up, right? Uh, yeah, so precursors. We need to uh, find out more about them. I mean, it's one of the most interesting things that we've discovered since we got into space. First, we discovered alien life form in the form of animals. Then some kind of space thing flew by and kind of made everyone freak out. And now we found uh, that there's been a, a, a race that was here before us, just, just one system over, and uh, died out. And, and so, yeah, things are popping off here in uh, the frugal empire, the frugal mandate, excuse me. All right, so uh, yeah, we get a little bit of a, of a mission here, and these will pop up from time to time. They kind of give you a direction, especially in the early game. Habitable World Survey. So, uh, you know, we, we've we've now, like I, like I said, we've learned so much. Uh, so there have got to be other planets out there that are habitable. So uh, our scientists want us to catalog uh, different forms, you know, wherever we might encounter them, the different types of uh, life and planets that exist. And, you know, we, we can, uh, can kind of think about this. What do we want to do? Uh, if we uh, if we take the initiative, it's going to begin the Habitable World Survey event chain, which will show up in our uh, situation log. Uh, if we say, uh, yeah, we got more important matters to focus on, then uh, it's not going to show up. Well, I'm going to be out surveying anyway, so there's really no reason not to uh, not to to give these scientists the information that I survey. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, grab that. And uh, again, it's just going to ask us to. Uh, yeah, habitable world surveyed, zero of eight. So just survey worlds that could potentially be inhabited by life. And that includes worlds that we couldn't inhabit. So this, you see this is potentially inhabitable by somebody, just not us. Because we live in an arid freaking wasteland, and this is an Arctic world, and that ain't happening. Not without significant research into the structures and methods that would allow us to do that. So uh, look at this. These guys are sleeping. We got to do something about this. All right. So my science ship, uh, anywhere inside this dotted circle is where I can currently explore because that's uh, that's where I can jump. Whoa, 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 what question mark? That's where I can jump with my wormhole technology. So uh, we're we're kind of already headed Special in this. What space amoebas? All right. So those guys that we encountered, those are uh, space amoebas. All right, they're uh, they're quickly nicknamed space amoebas. Okay, analyst gross misreading of initial. Uh, all right, uh, so, as so as so many things are named right by someone misreading something. Uh, further study is warranted. We may choose to either remotely monitor the creatures uh, and its kin from Ricks, or attempt to swiftly bring down a specimen and study it. Um, 
Yeah. So remote study will put us on the uh, project Space Amoeba Observation and uh, deciding to basically kill one uh, but begins the Space Amoeba Specimen event. All right, so I think we're going to study them peacefully because, you know, there's no profit in uh, just randomly killing things, right? Okay, so as I was saying, pause here just so we don't get interrupted by something else. Uh, our science ship is uh, is laying dormant right now, so we need to uh, get him working. And uh, the science ship is actually the really easy one to keep busy uh, because we can go anywhere inside this dotted circle. And so we will. We are going to go here and survey the system. We are going to go here and survey the system. Uh, you'll notice every time I go somewhere, I have to come back here because this is where my wormhole generator is based and I can only jump to other systems by coming here so I have to jump back to my home system in order to jump to a new system it's a little bit inconvenient but ultimately it is a really fast way to travel so here we go and let's see do we have any more things to build looks like we covered everything for our construction ship right now yeah he's he's a uh, completely filled up so there's really nothing we can do uh, the only thing that might be smart to do is sort of have him trail our science ship so we'll go ahead and send him over here with our science ship and uh, you can see slowly but surely the the borders of our empire push out as our population expands as our influence expands uh, it's going to push out and eventually systems that were not initially uh, in our particular hostile fleet uh-oh, let's see what do we have here. Uh, so first, we uh, so the space amoebas from the uh, Spaceborne Organics has been detected. All right, direct course. All right, okay, mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, then our uh, science ship, Marksman, encountered the uh, space amoeba fleet. All right, so space amoebas, maybe not as docile as they uh, at first appeared. They didn't attack us, uh, but they do seem to have sort of a, sort of a, a, an attack posture, should we say. So our science ship freaked out, and he's going to get out of there. Uh, as is our construction ship, uh, because they're both set, I believe, to evasive. So that means if they encounter alien life, they will flee from alien life uh, if it is not uh, docile or allied alien life. So we're kind of screwed. That sector uh, has a potentially inhabitable world that would help us to fulfill one of our mandates. Um, here in our situation long, but uh, there is a hostel camped out there. So why don't we go ahead and uh, send this guy back over here. One of my main complaints with this is if you are set to evasive and you bump into something like that, you retreat and your queue uh, is completely gone. So if I queued up 10 different things for him to visit here, I could have queued up this whole entire sector. Uh, it wouldn't matter. He would have seen that alien and just ran back home and parked there. Just like, no, 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 I'm done. That's it. I'm done. So it's a, it's a little bit annoying. So this is going to take some time. Um, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to start sending my military out to try and uh, survey some of the stuff over here. It'll only be a visual survey, uh, but it'll at least allow me to start getting an idea of what we're dealing with. And if I encounter hostile life over here, I'll know it's not worth sending my, uh, sending my science ship to even survey until we can clear out that hostile life. So we'll get the uh, first strike force out and about. Oh, we have new aliens encountering wild boar, a wild door, uh, beta aliens now. So we have beta aliens. All right, so more space amoeba fun here. Uh, we're gonna hang on to that for a minute. Let's see, so if we were to research that, it'll take six months and our current society, or three months and our current society research would be put on hold, okay. Uh, but let's go ahead and start to find out about the to find out about the beta aliens. Let's get some of these events done when we can. Find out about our neighbors, the people that are flying in and out of our sensor range. Uh, the green dotted circle is our sensor range, any given ship's sensor range. So uh, when an alien flies through there, that's when we kind of discover it. You may see occasionally one will skirt through my territory, and it won't actually hit my sensor range. So we'll kind of see a glimpse of it, but we won't actually uh, detect it on our uh, proper sensors. All right, so things are looking up here. The first uh, strike force continuing to do its work. And uh, we've got some energy credits here. So we have something for our construction ship to do. And our first research is complete. 
All right, so we have deflectors now for all our ships. That is a great thing. So now we can shield our precious, precious ships. So right off the bat, we could improve those deflectors. Uh, that is an, uh, a 118 month project. That's a huge one. Uh, or we have uh, energy themed, uh, an energy themed uh, research here, or another energy themed, themed research. Hmm. All right, so uh, Power Hub One here, or the uh, Batharian Power Plant. Of course, we're still researching uh, the Batharian stuff here, uh, but uh, should we get there, we'd be able to build a Power Plant Two, which is going to give us four energy instead of I think two or three, which is what the normal power three is what the normal power power plant gives. Uh, Batharian power plant normally gives six. It'll now give eight instead. And our overall capacity to store energy, which is currently 2,500, will be increased by 250. Now, on the other hand, down here, we have a power hub. The power hub will produce three energy, which is the same as a normal power plant, but it will give us plus 10 energy credits. Goodness. All right, so... It's a tough decision, I'm not going to lie, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with that one because that's that I just went with that one. I, don't, I can't tell you why. I just did it. That's what a leader's got to do sometimes. You just make a tough choice. Okay, so, so far, uh, this is turning out to be a decent system. We've got energy credits. We've got uh, engineering research. And we've got a habitable world. Fuldora 3. A habitable world, and it's big too. 21 surface slots. Oh, it's beautifully arid, just like we like it. There's some wildlife here, sure. Uh, this is going to be a great spot for our first colony. Absolutely great. Oh man, this is a this is a huge find at this point in the game. So this will be the, the target of our first colony ship for absolute sure. But in the meantime, we are going to go ahead and utilize our construction ship. Uh, okay, what do we got here? This planet's not within our borders. Oh, right. Mm, it is just outside our borders. Now, when we colonize this, it will be within our borders. Our borders will extend to our colony, uh, but currently we are not able to add anything. So actually, our construction ship's going to get real bored real fast because he's just going to kind of be stuck sitting there. Hmm, that is not going to be fun for him. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Since I have found my definite first expansion over here on this side of the map i'm going to move over here and start trying to survey some of the stuff that the uh, first strike force has been uncovering for me over here oh my goodness the first strike force seems to have stumbled onto something ancient mining drones so we have found a, a network of autonomous drones that are uh, mining they appear to be uh, abandoned uh, maybe maybe someone's out there to hear them maybe not i don't know but we're gonna yeah we're going to try to uh, exploit this to our advantage. So if we decide to uh, just be a passive listener, we will get a special project about observing the drones. Uh, or we can uh, take them out, in which case we will uh, begin a chain where we start to take out the uh, mining drones. Again, I'm, I, I don't think there's any profit in destroying them just yet. I'd like to learn about them. Maybe we can, we can use them in some way to our advantage. So here we go. We're gonna we're gonna start to uh, we're gonna start to try to figure out exactly what's up with these mining drones. And this is actually an engineering based research, so uh, it's not gonna derail my colony ship. All right. So here's the current plan of attack. So a construction ship can build a thing called a frontier outpost. And frontier outposts can extend the reach of your empire. They are sort of costly because they use one influence a month. And they're not as permanent and don't uh, don't give as many of the benefits of actually colonizing a world, but they are a way to extend your borders uh, briefly, you know, or, qu or quickly, so that you can then uh, take advantage of a lot of the resources that uh, you might find nearby. So what I'd really like to target with that is a set of planets or systems, excuse me, that are very close to each other in a galactic sense. So you know, there's some stuff here, not not really that close together, because it's going to give me about, it's going to give me a, a a bit that's smaller than this green circle. So I'm going to gain about as much, really really about as much as this. It's kind of what I'm going to get from a frontier outpost. So I kind of want to do it in an area like this. Hmm, yeah, like this. See, so so this guy here, unknown number three eighteen, a colony here or a frontier outpost here might hit this 
and this, and maybe even this. Yeah. All right. I want my science ship to drop everything and survey this system. All right. Well, now we have gamma aliens. More and more aliens. We're meeting them every day. Special project hmm. complete. All right. So we finished the uh, information about the mining drones. We got our listening post established. All right. The drones are, are not completely silent. They're communicating. Okay, that was a, a good discovery. Uh, so yeah, so now we'll, we'll get basically a list of mineral-rich planetoids in our situation log uh, because situation log we complete. listened. And that is going to lead us to uh, a whole lot of money or a lot of minerals, as it were. Uh, so yeah, so now we have we have a, 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 an increasing amount of kind of background quests that we're going to potentially want to look at. We have our precursor stuff. Okay, that we want to we want to try to find more artifacts from this precursor race. Uh, we have our uh, habitable world survey, which is not going too well at this point, uh, and we have our high value mining targets. Uh, so a bunch of mining targets we can track them on the map if we'd like. And take a look, see. Okay, yeah, they're they're in the area. All right. So this is the information we gleaned from these uh, the communication happening between these these mining drones. Uh, so each of those might also be the site of a uh, of a mining expedition, which means that there may be hostile drones there that we have to to kind of take out. But you know, I, it's it's certainly worth looking into, so we can kind of expand maybe in the direction of one of these. We'll have to see. So there are a lot of things that start to open up for you. You know, we are uh, we've got all these different aliens that we've encountered. Uh, how's our research going? Seventeen months remain. I, I think I can, I think I can I can stand to uh, interrupt for another. Uh, alien research. It's going to be the Gamma Aliens this time. All right, so hmm, I'm trying to think of the best way to use my time right now because I've got my I've got my science ship out here surveying. It didn't find a hostile alien, which is great. It found a world which is uh, not going to be habitable because it's continental. You know, just plain old dirt and water, not the arid sort of climate that we love. Uh, but this system does seem like it might be worth expanding into. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and get my construction ship headed here. We're going to orbit uh, this. Uh, we're going to orbit this moon here. A oh, moon. That's a sun. That is a sun. In fact. All right. So uh, we're going to get everything lined up here for our for our expansion over here, and we are going to give our fleet a few more stars to, to go and discover. Uh, why don't we take a look at some of the stuff that's in the neighborhood over here and see exactly what we see. Okay, that is outside of our wormhole range, just outside, so we can't go there, but we can... Oh, that's also just outside. Just outside of our range. So we, we'll head to those two. All right, so uh, we got, we've got a... Uh, who got promoted? Scientist Kofi. That's who. Yeah, Kofi. Good job, man. So now Kofi is a level two scientist. System survey. And we have finished a uh, special project here. It is the uh, Tianki. Tianki. Tiang. Tianki. I don't know. All uh, right. So spaceborne life forms. Um, they are just kind of they, they graze on gases common to the upper layers of many gas giants. So just uh, cows. Just you know they're just grazing. Just space cows. They're cool. All right, and, uh, you know, because we're fanatic materialists and there's very little to be gained from killing these, uh, yeah, you know, be a, a net loss anyway to hunt them. So, obviously, we're not going to. Also, we're, we're nice people, despite being a horrible, plurocratic oligarchy that is run by only the wealthy elite. All right, so how's the survey going? Any more? Okay, so we've got a decent amount of, of uh, actual... Um, energy credits here, so it's it's going to be all right. We'll go ahead and start construction uh, on our uh, frontier outpost. And again, you can see it's going to be 90 minerals, 180. So the vast majority of our uh, influence, and it's going to take one of our monthly influence in order to maintain it. But it is going to be worth it to expand the borders of our empire in a timely fashion. We may later regret this, or we may later... Uh, decommission this, but at this point we uh, we really need to kind of start some kind of expansion. Oh, we see unknown aliens moving into the system here, perhaps? Yes, indeed, we have discovered Delta aliens. Let's take a quick look. Let's pause and, and move in. 
Okay, this is definitely not some sort of space-born organic. This is most certainly another intelligent spacefaring empire. Excellent. So the temptation here is to immediately research this, but I think I'm getting pretty darn close, just 11 months away on my uh, colony ship, so... Mm. Oh, man. Uh, do I really want to... I really want a six-month interruption? These are the first intelligent alien beings that we've encountered. I, I think we have to interrupt for that. And so you can see they're not they're not taking a... Yeah, they're not they're not taking a, a, a hostile stance here. That's excellent, excellent. So we may have met our first neighbor. Very cool, very very cool. Oh, and they're actually they're they're uh, exploring. Oh no, those are just the grazers. Okay, I was gonna say I thought our uh, our new friends here, the deltas, were uh, exploring uh, Rixaru, but they're not. They're not. And uh, this is part of the reason that I'm trying to expand early, because as you start to meet these new aliens, you will very often find that that planet that you're targeting that is just perfect for what you want to do is actually within the uh, confines of the uh, of another alien's empire. And so I'm trying to just jump out here and do what I can as fast as I can. We're getting, we're getting our science ship kind of moving again. Absolutely need that. We can see the progress that our construction ship is making as we are nearing the end of the second in our series of Stellaris videos here on Big Davis Cheap. Yes, indeed, I think we are nicely set here. Let's take a look at our friends, the Delta aliens, as they as they head through the system. Uh, the way that they're traversing the system, this is not a science vessel. It's not. Oh, it is. It is. Okay. Yeah, I, I spoke too soon. This is a science vessel. You can see they're stopping to scan. So this is definitely in their neighborhood. And we've just we have just made contact with the Zach plot mandate the Zach the Zach plot mandate yes diplomatic channels are open excellent and here they are look at them in all their glory the first alien life forms that we have encountered they look not all that different from us actually greetings from the Zach plot mandate we are a democratic nation committed to upholding the individual freedoms of our citizens and we might have some problems there our elected leader president Kilgskilgsen, Lobinikrix, right? Hopes for a long and productive relationship with your people. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna call him President Lob. So President Lob, all right, wishing us wishing us well. And due to our traits, we then get a series of responses that we get to choose from in uh, in how we greet these aliens. Uh, so we can say because we are uh, we are individualists, we can say uh, our citizens uh, all send their regards. Because we are fanatic materialists, we can say uh, the way forward lies in our hands. Because we, you know, we we got all the stuff. And because of the combination of these two traits, we can say, who's Big Dave? This is Big Dave speaking. As if, you know, they're asking, who are you? And I'm saying very indignantly, this is me. I'm a big deal. All right. Well, our citizens send their regards. Great. And uh, here are the news. Here's the news reporting. Uh, yeah, it's it's happened. We found other sentient spacefaring aliens, and uh, this changes everything. They have a level of technology similar to our own, indicating that uh, we achieve spaceflight roughly the same time. This changes everything, indeed, and that is a, a great place for us to uh, take a breather. So our frontier outpost is nearly complete, and our science ship is off doing its busy, busy science work. We have five months re remaining on our colony ship, and uh, we are ready to expand. We have Voldara 3, is it okay, in our sights. That's not going to be a fun name. And uh, we are ready to expand the, the confines of the uh, of the uh, Frugal Mandate. Oh, and there, there they are on the map. Yeah, like I said, dangerously close here to where we want to expand. So uh, here they are, and now we, uh, we, we have opened up a little bit more of our map, and, and it is... Uh, it is getting crowded over here in our part of the galaxy. All right. So until next time, guys, I have been Big Dave. Take it easy.